Hey now, maniac in the house. What's going on? I'm gonna go over. Uh, this is the Magloop control box. I'm gonna go over all the components. I've had a lot of questions about how to do this. It is not rocket science. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna start with the control box because this is really the heart of the magnetic loop, K1GMM. Okay. Uh, you can use either an air variable or a vacuum variable. Uh, air variables are great if you want to run QRP. It's very cost effective, very cheap. Uh, I'm not a big QRP person, although I in enjoy it occasionally. But if I'm going to go out, uh, I want the maximum amount of fire coming out of whatever antenna I'm using. That being said, I chose uh, the vacuum variable capacitor route. Uh, this is a Comet. 10 to 100 puff capacitor uh, motor drive um, so let me go through what you're seeing here um, this is really the heart your capacitor of the magnetic loop antenna the side the length of the elements the circumference and diameter of the secondary loop uh, basically you have a coupling loop which is where your coax connects to or some kind of matching system gamma match or however you're going to do it or and you have your secondary loops uh, the secondary loops are the larger loops that or loop that runs around the outside now this mag loop loads 15 through 40 meters to get 40 meters I actually run a two turn loop so 15 through 20 uses a single turn of LMR 400. A, a 40 meters requires two turns of LMR 400. And I'll show you later on how to use one capacitor with a fairly tight capacitance, which is what this is. 10 to 100 is not much, but I was focusing more on efficiency. And I know efficiency has a lot to do with loss, and I'm going to go over that as well. Um, that's a factor as well not just the size of the loops but how you have everything connected how much loss is present uh, resistance is a killer magnetic loops so here we go this is basically an 8 inch you can use any box you want this is basically an 8 inch electrical box everything I have is on 1 inch PVC so I have a 1 inch PVC coupler on the bottom this goes on what I call a toilet tater uh, 12 volt DC antenna rotator so I can turn the loop because they are directional remotely uh, from where I'm operating from be it the vehicle or sitting at a table now let me go over a couple things uh, regarding the the heart of the system um, basically every point on a magnetic loop where you don't have a hard connection is a point where you could have resistive loss and that's amplified and magnified throughout the entire circuit so um, what I have because this is portable this is for strictly portable operation the whole thing packs breaks down into a duffel bag um, I have SO239 SO239 the reason why they're staggered is because I run a tur two turn loop on 40 meters so one loop actually runs across here and it's connected with a barrel connector okay um, this is basically just flat strap ground strap and I have it hose clamped to the capacitor fairly very adequate now what I did was is I soldered the flat strap to the center pin and the shield of the SO239 that's a hard connection that's good that's what you want to do okay now yeah the SO 239s are only going to be so good this will take 100 watts plus um, so basically what you're looking at is some way to mount the capacitor these are not cheap this is the most expensive part if you're going to run power you will need to run one of these uh, also they're not susceptible to barometric pressure or humidity or anything like that that's where the vacuum variables you pay uh, you get what you pay for you can run a lot of power in these usually depending on the efficiency of the loops and uh, uh, compared to like an air variable cap where a lot of times you're limited to oh, 20-25 watts max uh, so you need a way to mount it to the box 
as you can see it's on a pulley system runs on a 12 volt very low rpm motor i think this is a 2 rpm motor uh, 12 volt dc and it's controlled from the radio i'll show you that later uh, via cat5 cable and this plugs into the control box the end of the cat5 cable so this drives the motor back and forth and helps me uh, enables me to tune it so as you can see this is this is basically a belt drive with a set of tooth pulleys you can get off of amazon um, I, i'm going to put a tensioner in a tensioner pulley drill a hole through the box and mount a tensioner pulley to pull this up under a little bit more tension because i hear it skip once in a while so that's a problem you can tell it's very loose so not a big deal anyways they are not the cheapest intended to build but yes they work okay we're going to move on uh, to some other stuff hopefully this gives you a picture and an idea of what's going on it's very straightforward very simple but i'm going to get into a little bit of the math and the calculations as well catch you okay let's talk about getting started here uh, get online find yourself a loop calculator small transmitting loop antenna calculator i uh, use 66 pacific uh, if you type in magnetic loop calculator in Google, this is the first one that pops up, seems to do a fairly good job for me. Uh, I know if I, I built a couple different types of magnetic loops, uh, I should say with different materials, one is three quarter inch copper, the one I, I built, I rebuilt basically, now uses LMR 400 because I want it portable. The copper tubing is just not practical. So, um, what you want to do first is you want to get an idea of what you're looking at, and I'll show you what to look for. So, I'm running 14 feet of coax, for, uh, LMR 400, and on 40 meters, I run a two, two turn loop, and I'll show you something interesting in a second regarding a two turn loop. Uh, but 20 meters, I just run a single, two, a single loop, single turn. So, uh, what you want to do. Uh, I have 14 feet of LMR 400 so put 14 feet in this field and LMR 400 is roughly 0 0.405 in diameter and frequency I have set at 14.1 so you can go ahead and hit calculate and scroll down antenna efficiency 69% 1.6 dB below 1 100% now 3 dB equals half an S unit so that's nowhere near uh, it's like a quarter of an S point. So in other words, you're never going to see that. Uh, 48 puffs to tune. That's what it's telling me. And that's about what it takes to tune it, believe it or not. Uh, it's right in there. The capacitor I know is turned to about the midpoint. And it's a 10 to 100 puff. So it's fairly accurate. 2,500 uh, plus volts, approximately 2,600 volts at the cap. And uh, here's the diameter down here. Diameter is 4.2 feet. That's exactly what mine is. I have about 51 inches in diameter, 14 feet on the circumference. So that's good. That's where you want to be. Now keep in mind, you want for a magnetic loop to function as a magnetic loop, you want it between 1 8 wavelength and a quarter wavelength. You don't want to exceed a quarter wavelength on any band you're operating on. Even though it will tune and, it'll, and it will require very little capacitance to tune it, it will cease to function as a, it'll lose its magnetic properties, so to speak. I, I don't know if that's the right term. Okay, so let's fast forward. Uh, let's go to, we're going to keep the, we're going to change the length. So we're going to double, we're going to a two turn loop. So let's go 28. I have two lengths, which are jumped together with a barrel connector of 14 feet of LMR 400. We're going to put in 28 feet, same diameter. And let's change the frequency to 7.1. And hit calculate. 62% efficient. Now keep in mind, this is in the same diameter. Okay, this is in a four foot, uh, roughly four foot diameter loop. But because you're not, you're gaining some inductance value there, uh, depending on how far you space the two loops apart on the framework, mine are spaced approximately, oh, two and a half, two and a half to three inches. Uh, believe it or not, uh, two turn loop 
in, in a 48 inch to 52 inch diameter this is about where the capacitor is 77 puffs it says it requires to tune approximately 3,000 volts and uh, interesting isn't it and it works really good on 40 meters uh, in a very small compact package but you're gaining a lot of inductance by putting an addition it's like a big transformer so I figured I'd show you guys that and you can get an idea of what you're looking at it, not that difficult now we're going to move on to the superstructure and all the different components required to build one we'll be back